Welcome to episode 123 of the Play Economics Podcast, your first episode back in this new year, 2024, and my Christ, Matt and I, in early December, we looked at each other and we said, you know what? Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> it's the end of let's, the year. Let's not leave everybody with a dearth of content. We'll give, we'll give you guys. We'll pre-record. You'll know that Baldur's Gate didn't deserve Game of the Year, but we'll, we'll pre-record. It did. And at the end of that, then the news will start rolling in in January. And like nope. the second we hit stop, I looked at my phone and they were like, oh, uh, Insomnia just had the biggest video game hack possibly ever. Yep. Oh, uh, Bobby Kotick is officially out at ABK. <laughs> oh, PlayStation murdered Xbox to death. And it's like just... Just news that you know we would have loved to cover in real time. Yep. Didn't cover in real time. Are covering after the fact today. Deal with it or don't. We got a lot. And Matt, I'm. We'll do. We'll. You, you want to do a segment here? I'm not talking about the Chinese government. I'm talking about this leak first. I'm hijacking the okay. show. I'm okay. amped up on That's Mountain fine. Dew. What does he say in Talladega Nights? I'll, I'll jump on you like a spider monkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly. What I'm <laughs> jump on you like a spider monkey. So I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. That's where I am today. <laughs> that's in fair. An extremely deteriorative mental space, wondering, thinking, hoping. Ho no, I mean, look. <laughs> so Insomniac got hacked, and they said we're going to release, we're going to release the Wolverine gameplay, and Insomniac said. Do it, pussy. You won't. And Anonymous said, "Okay, we did. <laughs> we will." You know how some people on Twitter sometimes are just like, "Fuck it, here is," and then they'll just post an entire movie. Like I saw that with Oppenheimer a bunch. Yeah. Like just here's Oppenheimer. That was the yep. theme where they were like, "Here's Wolverine." And let me tell you, before you get there's no dice in the game. How will you know whose turn it is? There's no clerics. <laughs> Wolverine's not a big class accurate paladin. He didn't figure out his character sheet. Fuck you. So you sh 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 just let me have this. <laughs> Those are so hyper specific. First of all, if you're so a leaker, accurate. if you're a leaker, you're a scum of the earth person because it is not your yeah. duty to uh, leak these games. This was a a leak. Like we've never seen. And I'm not going to be one of these game press people. You see all those, them are kind of funny who are like basically painting the walls with the GTA 6 leak when that first happened. And they're like, we're not going to cover the Insomniac leak. I paint with an even brush across all my opinions. We're going to we cover, cover both it. of them. Okay, yeah, Not my fault. You got leaked. Yeah, guys, don't make, don't make your password MacBook with a capital M. Okay, it, just don't do in, that. In the article from the video gamer, it took them 25 minutes once they were in to get everything they were able to get into their server and then every access they needed to get 25 to get the entirety of the leak it took them 25 minutes and then they were out so Could you imagine yeah i can because we saw them so the i was on this. wolverine one <laughs> i'll give you a hint so here is my thoughts on this mm -hmm. from two angles i'll be quick i'll be succinct how does Wolverine look? Wolverine looks in pre-alpha better than most other games are finished. The potential that this has is fantastic. Now, I don't want to stand up here and be a hypocrite and say, ba ba ba, but Bobby, but this, but that. The gameplay we saw of Wolverine getting thrown out the window and he still got a sword in him and he pulled and he heals and he just murks the guy. Everything I wanted in a Wolverine game. I was all in on that. Give it to me, inject it into my eyes. Yep. Then they said, but you also play as Jean Grey. And you also play as, there's a Venom game coming out and an X-Men game. And I'm like, you did exactly what I knew you were going to do. And now I, don't, I like this less. Yep. And now I like this less. Yep. 
and now I like this less. They leaked, hey, we're getting a Venom game. Remember the Miles Morales one-off? What if you had that in Venom? And what did I say, Matt? I said, I like playing as Venom. I don't want the Venom game. I want the Venom game, but I don't want it. Like, the, the, in my head, I'm like, wow. Venom's awesome. He's a, I'm, it's Kratos with, with Spider-Man. But see, I don't want it. Now that see, I've had time to ruminate, now okay. that I've had time to think, and I see that, oh, you get to play as Jean Grey in the Wolverine game? No. No, so you don't want to play as Jean Grey. Is that, that's I don't, if I'm getting a game called Wolverine where the trailer is Wolverine in a bar in his flannel and his cowboy hat, and I know that gritty-ass tone, <laughs> I don't want some stupid-ass side mission where they're like, and now you get to move shit with your mind. Not what I'm here for. I don't need the X-Men cinematic universe. I don't need Insomniac to be the Marvel team. If you had just given me Spider-Man and you had just given me Wolverine, I would have been happy for the rest of my life. Yep. They weren't going to do that. They weren't going to do that. The money there's, there's, there's too much at, money. Listen, I said it, I think it was two months ago when we were talking about Spider-Man 2 and we were talking about the Venom gameplay, that they're going to have a Venom game. They have Wolverine. That Sony is eventually just going to be putting all of the superhero games on their console as many as they could get their hands on and exactly where we were with tv where blockbuster movies got taken over by iron man captain america all of the marvel universe now sony is living in that we're area here. we're Listen, here baby blade you don't remember blade? we're getting bl- shot that's on xbox up. stop but- it <laughs> no first of all we don't know that because xbox has not come out and said that it's an exclusive and if yeah, it is, because, why is it so hard to say that, Phil? Because they're bouncing around whether or not it should be an exclusive. I would argue it should it's not, not gonna be. be. Yeah, it's it it is too big of a name, and it doesn't make sense. And listen, you could have it. It's six and one, half a is dozen in the other. Too big of a name. No, 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 no. But it's such a universal name. Like everybody that anyone that is interested in Blade is going to want to play it. And it will not be a big enough game to get you to buy an Xbox. It just won't be. You're not going to be like, oh, I love the Blade comic and I love the Blade movie. I'm buying an Xbox. You might buy a Series S for it. You might buy a Series S for it. But it's just it. games like this, you want a big splash. You want to put sales numbers. You want to say this many people are playing it. It's It's just a name. It's a franchise. It's... Even if it's Blade, it's also Marvel. It is just, it needs to get to everybody so that everyone can enjoy it because it's a universal title. And I understand that Sony does the exact opposite. And wins. And And wins because of it. Because it's Spider-Man. Yeah, because it's Spider-Man. You can imagine if Sony was like, we're making a Blade game. They're like, no, stupid, shut up. We're going to make You would be all over it. You would be absolutely all over it if this was a Sony exclusive. Blade is so not high on my list of things I wake up and think about. Yeah, until it comes to... I guarantee you, if this was the other way around, you'd be 100% in on this game. And you've admitted it on the podcast previously. There's just nothing that I like about... It's cool. Dark, gritty vampire hunter. Sounds very Bobby. Sounds very Bobby. Yeah, but like Evil West is cooler than Blade. Stop. Stop. It is. Stop it. Well, like also, you said you would, never, you would never play Evil West. I still have it. We'll I still have it. Yeah. I still but have what, it. What I wanted to touch on with the Wolverine leaks and a big piece of it is, one, the release date is the leaked release date of where it is in Sony's plans is October, December, 2026. They still ain't got nothing coming for 2024. And now it's looking like they might not have anything for 2025. either. From insomniac before you sound ridiculous. They have nothing from insomniac coming in 2024, a studio that has gone three no, times no, no, no. already in the no, console's no, no. life cycle. Sony still has nothing. And people like you oh, I'm and sorry. other did, Sony did, did, people. Did you, did you see the sucker punch slate? Did you see the and, Maven slate? And other Sony people, slate? I haven't seen a game. Gorilla slate? I haven't seen so a you game. So don't know I what they have coming in Oh, I'm sorry. The Naughty say. Dog is clearly supposed to be factions, and that's yeah, not that happening. Was, so li- not well. I'm not confident that Sony could push out a title in 2024 yet. But God, the I only other piece, that, shit on this. yeah, oh, we're gonna just we're, say, we're, just we're say. gonna get that straight. Clip it, and, and clip it. I will. And they're gonna be mid. So. 
I don't understand what makes you think this. So what I want to point out with the Sony potentially becoming the premier place to play superhero games is that back on this podcast like three, four months ago, we had talked about what are Sony's angles for combating the Game Pass. Long development time. No, 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 not even Game Pass. Long development time of their extremely expensive, high budget first party games. And their way is to fluff it out with superhero games that even if they're dog shit will sell because they're associated with a very, very high profile character. They have Spider-Man and which we saw was an extremely high budget game. So that's out of the concept. Yeah, that was but, not a three hundred and fifty million dollar game. I played that no. again. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Sorry. Guys. No, but having a slate of superhero games that you're getting to the marvel point where they've been in development for a couple of years and now by 2027 or 2026 is where i think this is going to start with wolverine 2026 wolverine 2027 venom 2028 no, new venom superhero was, venom was first we're getting venom next year is it yeah 2025 we're getting, we're getting venom next year and it starts 2025 miles morales right like but listen not for nothing whether they are of large scale or not, you're right, they're yep. going to sell. And it's a very smart thing for Sony to say, how can we combat Call of Duty? Marvel mm -hmm. is a great way to do that. The yep. short bite size, con like, I like what you're saying here, but I like it's from a fanboy perspective. But at the other time, it's like, look what happened with the shows. Look what happened, like, yes, but look what happened the first, the last 15 years. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I was going to say. The last 15 <laughs> years of I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Go us canceled. Go ahead. <laughs> get us canceled. I want a, I want a game. <laughs> it's so hard to do this podcast with you. Just let me go through. Just try to get us canceled every week. I want a, a Pokemon Snap like game, but it's Marvel. And you're the kid, you're the fake cameraman filming Jonathan Majors breaking up the fight between the two girls as a PR. <laughs> So question, would you, would you, that sparked a thought in me. Would you play a Spider-Man game where you play as Peter Parker, the journalist, and have to take photos of yourself? Uh, well, you, that's a mini game in the actual game. Is it? They have that? Yeah. Okay, cool. No, 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 that's fantastic. I, I would never play a Spider-Man game. I said it. But uh, where I was going with this original point. <laughs> Where I was going with this original point is that Marvel has officially answered the question of what are they going to do to float the ship while their high budget first party games are in wait. And it seems like starting in 2025, it's going to be superheroes. I'm We're going to get Venom, gonna look real Wolverine. Yeah, I'm going to look real stupid once I tell you that that Venom game is my game of the year. But yes, yep, it is. I will hold fast to my morals until then. I understand that no one wants this to happen, but like Marvel made a shit ton of money with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So like I can't I can't tell you don't do this because it's going to print money and PlayStation found the answer. We did a whole episode on how is Sony going to be able to do this now that games are so expensive and now that they take so long to develop and damn I did not see I did not see the superhero thing coming. And listen, if it's what you hang your hat on and it's how you pay the bills, everybody's got to do something. Everybody's got to pay the bills. I'm cool with Sony diving into the superhero thing. They're not for me, but they're for pretty much everybody else. Yep. And, and speaking of PlayStation, they destroyed xbox last year in console sales it was a three to one and at time of like by the end of the year playstation hit 50 million units sold which is i believe slightly below pace for the ps4 but considering all of the hardware shortages they had all of the covid technical issues they had it's pretty impressive that they are where they are specifically because they didn't release a single oh they released one first party game in 2023 and still outsold xbox three to one which how are they doing this because how are just, they doing this? they're just better 
so in every it, conceivable way. Is it really that it's just better? Yes. Or is it Phil Spencer was correct in saying he lost the console war in the PS4 Xbox One generation, and that was the critical generation to win. And now people are really just playing Madden FIFA COD anyway, and they're just going to buy the new version of whatever they had. Correct. 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 Because is it really that Sony is just out, like, putting out such good content that in a year they didn't put anything out, there wasn't a little spike in Xbox sales? And I don't want to, like, completely shame Xbox. They also did really good numbers comparative to themselves. Sure, Jan. No, no, this is much, much better than the Xbox One. The Series X and S are a much, much better product, better selling product. Oh, than that for than that Microsoft you guys did last time, yeah. That yes, was... than <laughs> Xbox One. So I'm not saying they're not ha- doing fantastic condemned. by their own metrics, but comparatively, was that generation, was the PS4 and Xbox One generation, that influential that Microsoft can really never recover? from the console war unless playstation continues to fumble Which like let's won't. say yeah like i i see it as the only thing that happened they went an entire year releasing one first party game and it was in november or october spider-man 2 came out and it wasn't even that good it was fine it was it was a good spider-man game but you said it yourself it wasn't worth the budget that was paid for it it was a 20 hour story if that it wasn't plus minus but yeah it wasn't a crazy like jesus this has to be game of the year and that was the only content they put out that year correct what is it like how long are they going to be able to do this before xbox can catch up if at all kind of seems like that's xbox's problem not no no i'm no no i'm not saying what can xbox do i'm saying what would sony have to do to lose this spot <clears throat> like how long can you have a content drought before i think it's if, really I that detrimental? i think if they had I, look i think they were able to get away with this year simply because there was so much other offerings that sucked out air on third party i think if yeah. i think if this wasn't a zelda and mario and final fantasy and Baldur's gate like that's the indie darling left field but like Zelda Mario Final Fantasy releases on their own are the headliner of the year. The three of them together in one year, it sort of spread the field. Plus, you had, you know, all this latent Bethesda hype, right, for that god-awful game that you you, you people did. and just Which more people have played it than Baldur's Gate, which is a wild statistic. (laughs) Because people realize, oh, there's dice in this game? Bad game. It also won most innovative game of the year from Steam. And how much do you think they paid for that? Exactly. Like how much do you think Bethesda paid for that? Because come on, come on, it's fine. It's a fine game. It's a low B. But it got it's, yeah. It, but it got absolutely smacked around by Baldur's Gate, just like Fallout as 4 it should by Witcher Three. All of this to say that I think now is really where you're going to see. You know what? What is that saying? It's like the tide. The tide goes out. You see who's not wearing swim trunks or some shit like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Now is is where you're gonna see that. Where it's like, fuck. If we like Concord, Hell Divers too. Like, it's genuinely a toss up where Final Fantasy, excuse me, Final Fantasy Seven, re whatever. There's a good chance that that could be like goaty material, right? It's it's shaping up to be fantastic. I'm t- you're disregarding it. Rise of Ronin. It's it's the only thing to look forward to from Sony this year, currently. But not true because you've also got Dragon's Dogma two. You've also got which is on, but it's cross platform. You can play it on anything. I'm saying a Sony exclusive product. Final the Fantasy only- VII Rebirth. Is it? Yes. Is it not on Xbox? Nope. All right. All right. Yeah. Then. That's fair, but I, I listen. I still have my game of the year as Hellblade Two. The, the close point, second is going to be the point I'm trying to make is Rise of Ronin. I could easily see another year where Sony coasts on second and third party exclusives, right? Yep, I could see that. But I could also see, you know, 
out of nowhere they say, hey, we didn't need to say anything. You know why? Because uh, in May, you're getting Death Stranding, and in the fall, you're getting Ghost of Tsushima. They could so easily do that. You could. You could. There is speculation that it'll be... Rebirth will also be released on Xbox. Yeah, there's but... speculation that the Earth is flat as well. So let's see what. Uh, listen, listen. That is a very, very square argument. That is that is a fine argument. It's <laughs> correct. That is a perfectly good stance to take. So but... I think it's a fifty-fifty shot. But I I think could they get away with it again this year, running the same playbook? Yes. But I think after that, you're good and fucked. If this is really. If Jim Ryan really puts such, such a wrench in the machine, yep, pivoting to live, and we can, do you want to go to the bungee thing next? To yes, kinda yeah. Kind of dovetail it. If, yeah, if, the CPA if, theory. If, if, you know, Sony really did buy a lemon here, which, with all due respect, it seems exa- like Sony bought Bungie for their staff. Bungie just laid off half of its staff. Yep. Bungie came in and swung their, you know, wiener around and said naughty dog's gotta make a live service game right? there's not enough and this is how transactions. and this is how to make it right and now it's canned and now it's canned because they were like oh you guys you guys don't know how to make a live service game because marathon is also indefinitely delayed now yeah so sony was like no you reverse card <laughs> because yeah. uh final shape is delayed and you just let off half your staff so yep. i think i think the bungee acquisition the more time we have removed from it the more i think that this was a mistake because I think Bungie is is you hired Bungie for the talent. Bungie has let go of their talent. What reason do you now have for Bungie? The Destiny IP, that shit's winding down anyway. It it is definitely winding down, and I believe also the live service ecosystem is so saturated now and honestly very heavily controlled by Microsoft that it's just the live service move was one of their options. And I think they came in too late. They came in too strong too late with the whole acquisition of Bungie. And now they're clearly pivoting to other longevity plays like superheroes. And this Bungie purchase is looking less and less valuable to them. And Bungie's bringing less and less to the table. Exactly. And I'm very interested in what do you think they do with it outside of a complete Sony takeover where it's your lead people are gone and now our lead people are in i think that would be the best thing for everybody yep and then they pull out an amazing and also just the um the talent perspective where they had a lot of layoffs similar to most video game layoffs those were almost exclusively qa not real people. Which, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, no. It's not, it's not real people, and I don't mean to phrase it like this, but it's not necessarily the game development talent that was affected by those layoffs. It was... Yes and no, because, look, I'm, 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 you know, being jokey here. I think QA is very important, because if you don't have QA, Agreed. it's how you get Starfield. So, like... <laughs> Damn. You know, you need, you, need, no. you need somebody with a working brain instead of eyes yes. from an outside perspective to say, this is not good dog shit look at what else is going out there yeah um this is load game simulator so could sony get away with it again yes but for not more than another year okay so you think by 2020 if in 2025 in february they drop a last of us quality game it doesn't i'm not saying it's the last of us three i'm not saying it's a god of war i think we're gonna get, i think 2.0 i think we're gonna get last of us three a lot quicker than a lot of us are thinking because of all of this i think they're on the phone with naughty dog right now being like you guys have no excuses make it make it good and make it fast yeah blank I, check neil we need this yeah that's fair but what i'm saying is in 2026 in January, or no, 2025 in January, maybe February, they release an absolute banger. Are you okay with the two years? Yeah, more or of less. Of no games? Like... Or do, do you think the damage would have been done by then? Like, do you think by 2025 it's too late? 
or 2025 is the absolute deadline? I would, I, w- I would say that that's, that's the time you really got to start making decisions as a consumer where you're like, am I, am I really only using this for Madden and FIFA? My thing is, I don't know if the ship has sailed. Because when are we getting, I think it all depends on when are we getting the next set of consoles. If it's all the way out until 2028, I don't think it's until 2027 that they could really have. Yeah, it's you're a te- ridiculous statement. You're, you're telling me that in 2027, they le- they bring you another God of War, another Last of Us, no, another yeah, I, new I, IP, I think, that it's too I, far gone and people won't buy a PS6? Oh no! I think Sony's going to win the next three console generations because they're just good. But anyway, I know my point is. But what I'm saying is, I think they could survive not only another year, but another year, and then a mediocre one after that. I think 2027 is when you need to be like, "This is the sunset of the console. This is what's coming in the P for the PS6, and that's good enough." Yeah, fair enough. I think they're in a re. They're not in a good spot because of all of the internal turmoil. The Bungie acquisition looks like a mess now. It looks like it was a rushed response to potentially the ABK thing, and they're regretting it now. And they haven't shipped a the last first party game they shipped before Spider Man was in 2022. Agreed. You know the last time people went to E3, Matt? 2019. It's a done baby. East. Yep. I don't. You wrote in the doc. Did we talk about this yet? I don't know. I don't either. But let's lightly touch on it. Goodbye and good riddance. Esports E3's didn't save them. forever. Esports, esports didn't weren't involved. It would they would have saved them. Esports would have saved E3, but instead well, you have esports events, not yep. You're reveal t- conventions. I guess. I guess the reveal convention thing it kind of ruined it. That's all we'll say about E3. Rest in peace, E3. We'll miss you. But honestly, the Game Awards at this point is taking over your slot, and I could just watch a Sony sh- showcase or a Microsoft Direct or a Nintendo Pokemon. Here's another one. You know who will be missed? <laughs> that is a fantastic transition. That is your best transition ever. Who who will be missed? Who, Bobby? Bobby. <laughs> Our other favorite Bobby K on this show. Listen, Bobby, I Kotick. was wrong. I was wrong. Bobby K is out. Bobby Kotick officially, he's gone. How many? Twenty-seven minutes, five, three seconds into the episode, you for the first time on this podcast after 123 episodes have admitted that you were wrong instead of just arbitrarily changing your argument at the time. Listen, and I'm proud of you. I, that Biosoft comment really hit you. I was wrong. That Bobby <laughs> it really it. hit you. But listen, here's my thing. He could still come on as on the board of directors next year. You're goddamn right. I don't think he's like I. I I'll, I'll be willing to secede this this victory. He's gone. It, but if watching Succession has taught me anything, Bobby Paddock's <laughs> not gone for long. You think? You think next season? When Call of Duty Gulf War or whatever bullshit, they're gonna like. Oh, remember how we rebooted? Did you hear this? That how they rebooted Modern Warfare? They're gonna have, they're gonna reboot Black Ops? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Yep. How's but... how's Modern Warfare Three? <gasps> That's the sound of someone <laughs> shitting their pants. Yes. Bobby Kotick, as of December 29th, is finally out of ABK after 30 years. That's such a long time. You think he buys Epstein's Island? (laughs) Is it for sale? It could be. It could be. Do you think he's on the list? Do you think that's why he's really out? Is that Bobby Kotick is on this list? And with all of his scandals... I think he helped write the list. Yeah. (laughs) That... Listen, that might be the most accurate take that you've ever had, that he was on his way out and was like, listen, I did some shady shit. I feel really bad about it looking forward. Uh, I need a newsroom and I need a federal prosecutor and then the DA because I have a list of about 500 people (laughs) that I'm taking with me. I got a gold parachute. I'm making $50 million a year for the rest of my life on what I did with ABK. I'm going to take everybody with me. I'm taking everybody with me. Um, But for more updates on what's happening with ABK, currently all of the other staff is being kept in the same. There's a couple other people that are leaving um, in early January, but for the most part, their brass will be in the same order. 
My question is, eventually it won't be. Eventually they're going to have to do this merger and it's going to merge corporate side. Bring in Todd! Bring in Todd! What do he we can think ship they a game do? That's bad. What do the, what do we think they do? Do we think it's I think you're gonna, Microsoft? I think, I think you get look because until the the whole scandal happened, you didn't you didn't know who the hell Bobby Kotick was. No, right? You didn't. He no. was just the guy who made shit work. Yeah, I I think that's who you need. You need somebody who isn't a face, who isn't a Phil Spencer. We're for the gamers. You know, Snake you think it grass. you think it's internal or do you think it's an external hire and if it I is internal it, i don't think it matters i think the best thing for them to do is hire somebody quiet who can do the job and ship the games what if they bring jim ryan in oh my god that would be brilliant <laughs> i think you just need somebody who ships the game does the job clocks in and out doesn't rape anybody that listen Listen, that seem is like a, a very hard job spec. That is a yeah, that is a very very accurate representation of what they need. I think it is going to be an external hire. I don't think they're going to have someone from Microsoft do what ABK did. I think they're going to have somebody similar to an ABK with yearly releases and just understanding of all three of their big marketplaces. Activision is the yearly releases, Blizzard is the live service slash continuous play, and then King is their mobile game devices. I wouldn't be surprised if they took somebody from a just mobile game, if they took the head of King and Maybe. put it, yeah, and made that. that the focus moving forward. And I wouldn't even be mad about it because it would be absolute print money. And especially with the focus that they're putting on their like mobile store, where they're going to compete with Apple and the Android uh, store as like a uh, like a Microsoft app where you or a Microsoft web store where you could purchase apps and things like that. I think it makes it very clear that King is clearly the big part that they wanted from there, and I could see them moving King to the forefront by having their all of ABK report through the previous head of King. Agreed, Matt. You want to quickly touch on the China thing before we move on to what we've been playing? Sure, I'll real quick do it for you. A uh, government agency official was removed from uh, the Chinese regulating body because of the extreme dip in gaming market share for um, the Chinese government. Tencent dropped 16% and NetEase dropped about 25%. This is all following a new regulation that was supposedly about to be passed of spending limits on microtransactions. From what we can tell, it is no longer in place. But could you imagine shipping a mobile game with a with a stipulation on how much you could spend in it? It would defeat the entire purpose of a mobile game or one of the like slot machine esque games. Um, and then the MPAA has announced that they're going to try to ease regulations and listen to more feedback about the restrictions. And in the month of December, 105 internal domestic games were approved, which is a, was grossly above the monthly average, uh, which means they are in effect trying to reduce those regulations. Listen, uh, man, it's real, real, real hard to be a communist and a capitalist at the same time, huh? It's real hard yep. to have people put QR codes on their knives that are chained to tables in their houses as while, you know, also have them regulate their own gambling habits. Like, Yeah. It's, it's very difficult to tell your consumers of your product to spend less money and buy less games and turn a profit. It seems, it seems <laughs> supply demand. It, very simple very simple contact and the chinese government got hit exactly where they didn't want to get hit their wallet and now all of a sudden regulations go back that's pretty much the entirety of the story and we're gonna see the i'm on hoping we see less ashy. regulations listen yeah when you see xi jinping later on this year doing a press conference from taiwan which will happen Oh my god. It'll happen. I'm telling you. This is the year shit pops off. We're gonna get wild this year. Bobby has a really bad outlook on oh twenty twenty four. I have nothing but dour about twenty four. Just because and <laughs> just because PlayStation's not releasing any games. Oh my god. It's like if PlayStation does release any games, they basically the entire world has that's to it, be. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Why do we even but have to call up the election? G will invade Taiwan. That's it. That's yep. it. If if Hideo doesn't get out Death Stranding, that's it. We're done. <laughs> 
That's the only thing that matters. Yeah. But that that's pretty much that's all the breaking down the business that we have for this episode. We're we're gonna switch into now. Segment is one of the most popular two. one of the most popular segments of the Play Economics podcast is what have we been playing? And Bobby, I'm gonna ask you to lead off first. What third person action adventure game have you been playing because you are incapable of change and don't appreciate anything that is not of your own ilk? Go. Diablo 4 and Baldur's Gate 3, you sack of slime. You did not play Baldur's Gate 3. I've been playing. I still can't get past that first <gasps> thing. Basically, I saw a Factor Life video where they're like, here's how you like easily win all fights. You're a bare knuckle duster or some shit like that. A monk. Tavern brawler. Yeah, yeah. Monk tavern you brawler. Tavern. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that sounds easy and less stupid than the game before. Then I saw a Fextra yeah. Life video on a new Elden Ring build with the Death Poker oh, Ghost damn. Flame build. I jumped damn. right back in. I jumped right back in. Are you are you having fun playing Baldur's Gate? No, Bobby? not even a little bit. Not even, <laughs> is I, there... it's, it is a it is a slog that I cannot commit myself to for more than like twenty five minutes at a time because it is such a uh, obtuse principle of which I don't. Are you go so let me ask you something. Are you just going from combat to combat or are you exploring? Kind of both. Again, I am restarting. So I'm basically back before I but now I know, hey, you gotta get your party members after yes. you get down in that uh yeah. weird ship. That weird Yeah, the Nautiloid. Yeah, the that's the what Nautiloid. you guys use it for. Yeah. Nautiloid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, Tavern Brawler, Ghost Flame build. Uh, not a third-person thing unless you count Elden Ring. Uh, Evil West is free this month on PS Plus. I downloaded it, but I haven't played it. Just for the month. Um, Crazy how they use that subscription service. Well, no, so here's how it works. Even more predatory. Not even a little bit. You, okay, you pay money for games you don't have forever. Also incorrect. Okay. The way it works, Mr. I Know Everything, is you're only able to download it for the month each month because it's a limited release window but if you download it you have it forever it's not like you only you only have the month to download it you don't only have the month to play it ah so the artificial scarcity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly ah, exactly good, good practice, uh and good nobody practice. saves the world if you remember like two years ago we played nobody saves the yeah. world it was a lot of fun maybe i'll jump back into that because there's a dlc attached to it but uh you know as we start the year here i have a bunch of irons in the fire my life being one of them just continuously crumbling just in my in. head just like <laughs> sand through my fingertips just any semblance of hope at happiness is just slowly evading me well i'm in a dark you know place and to start talking yeah. before that it's okay but we have play economics we have play economics and that's maybe, what's worthwhile maybe no keep talking but, shit maybe. i don't know <laughs> are you gonna ask me what i've been playing yeah, it I've says, been... Bobby is going to be so mad at me. And if you say Bloodborne, I'm going to jump through the screen and kiss you on the mouth. No, I've not been playing Bloodborne. I've been playing a good game. So, That's one. Fucking stupid take. Me and the Apex group have been playing Baldur's Gate. Tons of fun. Highly recommend it. Me and Sarah finished Baldur's Gate. So, on our joint playthrough, immediately jumped into another one because it's fantastic and a great game. Was it, was it weird having... Baldur's Gate sex with your wife? You can't. You can't. That was the first thing she asked me. She was like, "Man, so can we fuck in this game or what?" And I was like, "I don't. I don't know if we can do that." And then she progressively Clear throughout history. So at the game, throughout the entire progress of the game, she is so bad at dialogue that she got every character to hate her. And was unable, and if you've played through Baldur's Gate, you understand how easy it is to romance all of these characters. And for the life of her, Sarah could not do it once. Didn't even come close. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Are you going to, are you, are, my, the, are the next words out of your mouth that you've been playing Minecraft? No, even worse, even worse. So, what are the two games that you're you would be upset if I started playing again? Again? So, if there was something that I picked up, probably that Warcraft. Okay, so there's World of Warcraft, and then what's another game? That oh, you I know exactly. I, I called you. I I know exactly what I I called your bullshit. I what called your bluff the other day in the car. What is it? You bought the DLC for Pokemon. 
two things. So you played them both, you son of a bitch. So me and Sarah both got sick after we beat Baldur's Gate. Oh, it's and a, I the could Safari Zone. You I, sly, I, sly. You I could not bring the, myself to tell me to on the talk. phone. No, no, no. I literally couldn't talk because my throat hurt so much. So I couldn't play a multiplayer game. I couldn't play anything with the Apex boys. Couldn't play anything with Sarah because I could not physically talk. So I needed something to play by myself. So I picked up Pokemon. I clicked on the DLC. Pathetic. You're pathetic. About about to start my Johto journey through Paldea. And then and then I Googled how long does it take me to get a Totodile? And they said something about 5,000 blueberry points. And I shut my phone off and I shut my switch off and did not download it. Oh, and then I played twist. World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and then I played World of Warcraft. I bet you did. And God <clears throat> damn. What a bad game. It's as g- it is as good as ever. No. It's God. absolutely fantastic. Help him, Jesus. He know not what he do. I am not addicted. And this is the first time in my life that I have ever picked up World of Warcraft after a long hiatus, played for an hour, and then shut my computer off and went and did something else. You ever see um, Anger Management with Jack Nicholson? And Adam have, Sandler, yes. you know the scene where they're in the group, and there's the guy who's addicting to uh, who's addicted to betting on the Sixers. Yeah, that's you. Yep. Where, you're li- where you're listening to the game, and you're like, "And the Sixers just lost, and it's okay." And then he's like, "The anger sharks are circling." <laughs> no, that's so you. I started playing World. The I started elf sharks pl- are circling. Listen, listen. Oh, World of I Warcraft is love, in a really love, good spot. I bet you love right clicking. I bet you right click. Wake up early. You right didn't click, play you the game right. You didn't have enough buttons. Yes, because you got a really hot key by Claire. Okay. The fact that you still press S <laughs> let me is absolutely nobody. Let me, nobody back let, treads. Let me. Let me. Shower, nobody walks backwards. <laughs> Nobody walks backwards. It's far less efficient than just turning your mouse slightly to the side so that you angle it back and walk oh, sideways me. backwards. Oh, I, I swear to God, that is a thing. I do not have backwards mapped on my keyboard. Do you, Cannot do walk you, backwards. Does Sarah know that you've stopped showering? Yes. She does know that I have picked up World of Warcraft again and is acutely aware that if I at any time cancel anything to play World of Warcraft, that she's allowed to throw my computer out of the window. Which would like, mean it? But Sarah, my my level eighteen wood elf has to go and make sure that it's properly leveled. See, what, you're, poking you, you, you're poking fun. You're poking fun. What? What? Let me ask you something. What? Let me ask you something. Because I know it's not a big push for you. Yeah. And what I'm about to tell you is like telling like an addict, like you think you could do heroin and fentanyl at the same time. <laughs> So stay with me. Look, I need you to be look me dead in the eyes and tell me that there isn't a world where you'd have Baldur's Gate on one screen and WoW on the other. <laughs> if I could, hey, tell me if that I that could isn't do a real thing that you would do. If I could, if I could do both, and I'm trying to find a photo. You would. I'm, I'm trying to find a photo. I would 100 percent in every day. If I could just go back and forth between those two every second of every day, I would. And I'm going to send you a picture of my Discord kitten. No. My World of War, one of my World of Warcraft characters that I hopped back into. So it is now on your phone and I will get you a live reaction to how cool my World of Warcraft character is. Fantastic. Very spiky. Very red. Very for the horde. And I'll post that as I this, edit this video. Yep, I'll this share share it with everybody. Toxic masculinity, if I've ever oh, seen it. Oh, you love it. You absolutely love it. But very hyped. World of Warcraft is in a fantastic spot. Dragonflight was a decent expansion. And after that goddamn announcement about the world within, it was a matter of time. It was a matter of time. You know what else is a matter of and time, Matt? What? All of the games that are coming what? out in January. Why don't you run us through the list here, bud? Your right. transitions have been well, unbelievable. But yes, listen, 22nd, when I'm in I'll a give depressive, you a game When I'm in out. a depressive episode, that's when the comedy gets real bleak and real good. 
It's good. Listen, listen. I hope that you never get out of you this. You hope I never find <laughs> happiness. You hope I never even find a modicum of no. you know forward Do progress I, in my goals. The only thing I ever want you to associate with joy is some random stripper at a just absolute dumpster of a strip club. That's joy for you. Is it, That's the only joy. Is you're it ever in New Orleans? Get. Are we doing play economics and bachelor party in New Orleans <laughs> from the strip club, baby? But. So we're doing a new Roxanne, segment on Roxanne, play. What do you think about <laughs> what do you think about Death Stranding Two? Come here. That that was my baby. <laughs> wow! And I'm gonna get canceled for the Jonathan Majors camera simulator. <laughs> wow! Yep. We're doing a new segment here on Play Economics called New Release Alert, you where we, we get break Jonathan down Majors on the podcast. He's not doing. I'm sorry. He's not doing shit. <laughs> His life is over. If I could... do you know, do you know how hard, do you know how hard it is to have a successful YouTube channel where I can't do transitions or ask people to subscribe to the fucking channel? Do you know how hard it is to run this fucking YouTube channel when I can't be like, "Hey guys, subscribe," without getting fucking interrupted? <laughs> and next week we'll have on Jonathan Majors. Oh my god. What would you okay. do? Real what would you do? Real... Just any, if we had Kang next week, there's a third box on the podcast, and it's not Jam Pack Sam. It's Jonathan Majors, fresh off his assault charges. <laughs> do you know what I would do? To be fair, I'm, I would to, co- to I clear, would cover the new release <laughs> alert clear, that you asked me to say. To clear, would, you asked me to say. I would not laugh. I'm not laughing at what he did. I'm laughing at the funny ass PR video that he staged breaking up a fight between two high school girls to make himself look like a decent human. Am I allowed to do the new release alert now? New release alert? Man, are you telling me new stuff is coming out in January? There is a new segment on Play Economics called New Release Alert where we break down everything that's coming out in the month. Of January first, Bulletstorm VR, a very, very needed addition to the VR library, it comes out January eighteenth for the PSVR two, the uh, Meta Quest, and it comes out to PC. Give it up then for we Bullet got Tur- Storm VR, everyone! Bulletstorm VR. On, then we got why, why Turn Up. This working? Why is this? Oh my god! I had a sound effect. Was, You're adding sound of effects. People clapping. I don't know why is it's it? not. Okay. Are we done? Are we done? With no, this is my Can life. I, I got through one. We got like 10 releases. I, I was trying to make it, it nice for you. <laughs> okay. Turn up boy robs a bank, which I didn't look up anything about this game because I want to be completely surprised when I play it. <laughs> You're changing the name of turn up boy robs a bank in the Google Doc right now. Comes to Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Is this... And it doesn't come to PlayStation, which means this is going straight, straight to Game Pass. Cannot Game wait Pass to play this for free. By the yep. looks of it. Then we got Prince of Persia. Oh, it comes out uh, also January 18th. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, January 18th. PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Then we got another Code Recollection, Jan 19th, coming straight to the Switch. Then we got The Last of Us 2 Remastered, January 19th. PS5 only let's see for how long it'll be on the playstation by the end of the year guaranteed we got graven coming out 23rd pc only howl 20 january 23rd p playstation 5 and xbox series we got under night in birth system 2 or two system celeste january 24th for the pc Man. and then we got apollo justice ace attorney trilogy on my birthday january 25th ps4 xbox one switch and pc wondering how that possibly did not go on any new gen consoles they decided nope just last gen which is a wild take then we got yakuza life like a dragon infinite wealth january 26th ps5 ps4 xbox series xbox one and playstation and then finally we got tekken 8 on january 26th ps5 xbox series and play store and pc then we also got a rugby game that nobody cares about of these major games bobby highlights thoughts which ones are you playing what do you want to look at none, what should the people none. be on alert maybe i'll check out that that uh maybe i'll, I'll pop the ten dollar upgrade just to check out the road like mode and last of us Two. but fair none of this i mean prince of persia lost crown whatever but that's a sale game for sure um True. if ever 
no, nothing really titillating me. I'm kind of keeping myself lean till Final Fantasy Rebirth in February. Outside of Turnip Boy robs a bank, which I'm strictly playing for the sheer excitement of booting that game up for the first time and being like, what the fuck is Turnip Boy <laughs> robs a bank? And how is this game going to play? And why is it all of a sudden in my 2024 game of the year? If that does not deliver that level of excitement, I'm going to be deeply, deeply sad on the podcast immediately Boy, following are you that. you setting yourself up for failure. <laughs> Outside of that, The Last of Us 2 Remastered, fantastic, great. I'm glad they have it. I don't think it's needed. The game is not that old. They This should have been... Is Last of Us 2 on PC yet? No. This should have been that. Yep. That should have been... La All of this effort should have been Last of Us 2 on the computer. Would have been a way, way, way better use of their time. Uh, the Yakuza games, I've never played one, and I really, really want to. That's one of those things where there's like, it's like, there's so many, I wouldn't even know where to start. That's what it's not that I want to like go through and experience the entire story, I just want to see what one of them is like mm -hmm. because it's such a well known franchise, and it's there's so many of them. And Xbox paid a ton of money to get them to announce this game at their showcase. I want to know what the hype is about. I know almost nothing of the gameplay of this game, and I am very, very interested in taking a look at it whenever it comes to Game Pass. Keyword there. And then Tekken <clears throat> 8, another fighting game. I love seeing them. Never going to Because play. I know I'm never going to play a fighting game. But I know that they have such a diehard fan base that like seeing Street Fighter last year and how cool that looked. Very excited just to see Tekken do just as well, if not a little bit worse. But outside of that, not much coming out this month. See us on the first week of February to find out what's coming in February. And our last segment of the show as we transition to the final piece of Play Economics is the Discord viewer questions. And this week's viewer question is, what are you most excited for in 2024? Software, hardware, expansions, new uh, tertiary products like uh, the PlayStation earbuds? Hmm, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Join the Discord if you want to give us our feedback. But this, this week, our big feedbacks are the most important things to the play economists are Star Wars Outlaws, which I 100% agree with. Cool, I guess. I'm, Star Wars Uncharted, fun. So the char the Star Wars Uncharted is where I think this comp is going to eventually be. I think it is going to turn into Star Wars Uncharted, which I think will be cool. I mean, that's what I'm not a big order is, basically. Fair, fair. The comp that we got on the Discord and what they are seeing from the games media is that it's GTA meets Star Wars. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen. But could you imagine if you get a GTS-esque game is it with the Star Wars space? brand on it? Is it in Space Miami? I don't want it. Keep it. If I'm not... getting the real thing soon. <laughs> Listen. Thank you. Maybe it is in Space Miami. Maybe it is in Space Miami. And then the second thing that people are very, very excited about, and I 100% share this optimism is the fallout TV i can't show. wait baby i don't want to set the world on fire but i'm gonna start a replay of fallout 4 why all right so hear me out hear me out why fallout 4 is it because it's the only one that you could play on playstation 4? because fallout no, you can, 3 you is, can stream 3 and uh, new vegas if you have the top tier i would say fallout 3 and new vegas are both better they are fallout i just 4. fallout 4 is the most accessible one it's the one i got the farthest in i like the whole nick valentine thing i like nick valentine he was my buddy I, you know i broke into al capone's vault with him or whatever that side quest was you find those yeah. videotapes for me no i didn't nick i did <laughs> no i didn't nick but yeah I, i'm very surprised you i'm very surprised very surprised that you're playing a Bethesda game but listen i'm playing a good I'm Bethesda very... game back when they were good so listen to me. Did you, you imagine if you walk into Nick Valentine's office and he's like, "Do you find those video?" I he, I feel like that's kind of what he say. Almost he sounds he. They tried to make him like Jimmy Stewart. Do you find those videotapes for me? Oh, what the fuck does Jimmy Stewart sound like? 
you know what I'm talking about, where he's always asking you to look for I those videotapes. Yep. Um, and I was like, no. But could you imagine if it's like, did you find those videotapes for me? And then a little prompt comes up. Roll dice to see if you could find Nick Valentine's <laughs> videotapes. God, no, what a it would, bad, bad. It wouldn't immersion break. So why are you still playing it? Why are you still melody? playing it? Why are you still playing to it? To just prove you wrong, I will expunge every ounce of effort of this game to prove to you that it's a bad game. I will create a full dissertation. Speaking of movies and actors from the 50s, I will come on this podcast dressed as Gregory Peck from To Kill a Mockingbird. There is... You're going to beat this game, and you're going to tell me that you don't like it. If you get past Act 1... It's like, oh, you, you got like... to watch 87,000 episodes of One no, Piece no, no, no. before he gets good. No, no, no. I'm, if you get past Act 1, you enjoy the game. There is no way that you will make it all the way out of Act 1 and not like this game. And if you do, you are fundamentally wasting your time. To prove and the... myself right. No, just never no. to redeem my honor. I cannot that has wait. Been impugned by subhuman opinions about Baldur's I, Gate with I cannot acronyms wait. and other slanderous <laughs> bullshit. I cannot wait for you to tell me that you do like Baldur's Gate or you to just be excited to tell me something that happened in Baldur's Gate on one of these podcasts. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to post the Spongebob sequence of him finding out that Squidward that likes Krabby that, Patties. That, that really big smile. Um, it's going to be a whole meme, hold, hold, it, and it's never going to die. Hold your die. breath. Let's see which one happens it first. Is, it, if you get past Act 1, I consider that you like the game, because there's no way you would spend 15 to 20 hours in a game you didn't enjoy playing. I didn't like Bloodborne. I put it down. It's because you have terrible taste. Listen, I just like games that do more than just put you can in the loading screen. Can we can we close the episode, Matt? With asking people to subscribe That's to the what channel. I was going to ask. Oh yeah, go ahead. No, no, I don't want to. Fuck you. I hope Dude. I hope the alligator from Lake Placid <laughs> steals your wife. No, not the gator. <laughs> not the gator. Stop telling alligators to sleep with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke but if you like what you heard here remember to like comment subscribe it helps us out with the youtube algorithm we need more subscribers because bobby keeps telling people not to subscribe or join our discord again if you're an please player, we don't subscribe want you. i don't if you have made it this far and heard this rant for like an hour please subscribe it's more content like this every goddamn time if you like what you hear and you want to hear more leave us a good review as well on apple Podcasts and spotify wherever you consume this podcast content we are going to be reformatting the show here in 24 matt took it upon himself to create an intrepid new format that i think you got a little bit of a taste of today and you're going to get a lot more a thick hot meaty taste of next week that's the kind of taste you're going to get so you better subscribe on all social medias we're going to be much more active on there on 2024 and we're going to be giving you a lot more play economics content and little bite-sized pieces on YouTube as well. And remember, as always, happy gaming.